Good morning, everybody. Oh, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Let me move all this off. I just realised I've written this backwards, so that's not a lot of help for anybody, is it? Amazing. Nice to see everybody. It's good to see so many comments coming up already. Like, I can see that Luca and Lily, um, Luca and Owls and Liam Woodpecker, uh, Robin, sorry, are watching, and Justin and Owls are watching as well, and um, Flo and Freddie are watching as well, so good morning to you, and Zach and Robin, so lots of year twos watching, which is nice to see. Um, I will say now, you're currently on a car phone holder on my window, so if it does suddenly go funny, it's because you've fallen off my window, so I'll just put you back up there. Let's hope you'll stay up there for the whole time. Um, but we will get started. I'll just move my glass of water so that's not in the, in the way of what you're seeing. Um, we are today going to be learning a little bit about VE Day. Um, so I've got a little story to tell you all about VE Day. And then we are going to be looking at how to make some bunting, um, which I've given a go already. I've given it my best shot and hopefully I'll be able to help you today as well. So there was a list of things you might need. It was on Facebook as well. So whilst I'm reading the story, um, you can see if you can, you can get them just in case you haven't got them out already. So um, if you'd like to join in, you can use some paper or some old material. That's what I've got over here. I've got lots of old t-shirts and sheets. Um, you need some string and some cardboard, some scissors and a little bit of glue. So hopefully lots of stuff that you'll have um, in your house already. I can see lots of people watching her to Lexi in Hedgehogs and her big brother. Um, so good morning to everyone and I think we'll get started. I have got some notes in front of me because I've got a bit to say and I've got some pictures as well. Because this isn't a storybook like normal, it's a story which I've been reading about online. So I'm looking forward to telling you all about it and I'm going to tell you a story about a boy called Alan. Now Alan was born a long time ago because this story is not set today, it's not set in the future, it's actually set in the past. It's set exactly 75 years ago today. Because 75 years ago today was the 7th of May 1945. Now, this was a long time before I was born. A long time, most probably before your mums or dads, whoever looks after you, was born. And most probably, even before your grandmas or grandpas were born. So this is a very old story. So it's the 7th of May 1945 and at the moment something called World War II is going on. Now this was a big war between lots of different people. However, on this day, Britain and their allies, so Britain and the people working with Britain, started to advance in on their enemy, in the, uh, their opposition from the East and the West. And this caused their opposition to surrender, which means give up the war because they didn't want to see anybody else get hurt. So essentially, 75 years ago today was the end of the war. And these rumours and whispers started threading back across Europe and all the way to the UK. And Alan heard these whispers and he went out onto the street and he saw lots of people dancing and partying. And I've got some pictures here. And this picture was taken exactly 75 years ago today on the 7th of May. And you can see people are out on the street dancing around. And Alan heard these people dancing outside and he went to join them. Now this is a man called Winston Churchill. Now he announced on this day, 75 years ago, that the following day, which will be tomorrow, the 8th of May, will be known as VE Day. And now VE Day, if you didn't know already, stands for Victory in Europe. That's when the war ended in Europe. Victory in Europe Day. And it was going to be a public holiday that everybody would be able to celebrate. But parties started a little bit beforehand. People were partying on the 7th of May out in the streets. There were bonfires going off. Lots of bonfires and people celebrating. Now bonfires, you get lots of old wood and you put it in a pile and it creates a massive fire that's nice and hot, that people stand around, and you can see lots of people have got their British flags. Now all these pictures are in black and white because they didn't have coloured photos 75 years ago. I haven't just not got coloured ink for my printer. These were all the photos, the real photos. So this was also from the 7th of May, 75 years ago, when people were having bonfires. Now, Alan, he didn't stay up late on the 7th of May. He went to bed nice and early. 
because he woke up on the 8th of May at 6 a.m. He put on his socks and his shoes, he put on his jacket, he grabbed his big oversized bag and he had an important job to do because Alan was a paperboy. Now, it was Alan's job to deliver all of the newspapers across London, his area of London, on the morning of the 8th of May. It was his job to tell everybody that the war was over. And this was quite a big responsibility. He had to deliver the newspapers that confirmed VE Day. And I've got some, a picture here of some people holding up a newspaper and it reads the top, it's VE Day. And this picture was taken 75 years ago today. This picture is a picture that shows us people celebrating. Now, another important job Alan had that morning, he was walking through the streets and he saw that the fires had started to go out. He saw that the embers were slowly dying down from the bonfires and he knew that everybody would want big bonfires today as well. So what he did was he kicked all the embers back into the middle of the bonfires. He got some timber, which is the old wood from the buildings, and he chucked it onto the fires and the fires grew again and massive bonfires were out on the streets for everybody to celebrate around like we had in this picture. Now something else Alan did on this day, or tomorrow, the 8th of May, 75 years ago, was he went to Buckingham Palace. Now Buckingham Palace is where the royal family live. And Winston Churchill, that man I said about earlier, who was our Prime Minister, went out onto the balcony with the royal family and they waved at thousands and thousands of people who were celebrating VE Day across London. So the reason we're celebrating VE Day tomorrow is it's the 75, 75th anniversary of when the war in Europe was over. Now, Alan knew this was a happy day and he was really happy about all the soldiers and the airmen and the sailors coming back from where they'd been across Europe. But there was something sad as well for Alan because during the war there'd been lots of conflict in London and unfortunately Alan's mum had died. Now Alan stopped to think and he thought about his mum and how sad he was but he thought about the happy things as well and he remembered that we should celebrate VE Day. We should celebrate all the people that fought for this country and all the, all the lives that were saved. But it's also really important to take a moment to stop and reflect and think about all those people who may have lost some loved ones, just like Alan. That evening he went to bed. He was pretty tired and he knew he'd had an amazing day celebrating the end of the war. And he remembered about his mum and he remembered all of his friends and he thought about all the soldiers that would be coming back and he was very happy about that. Now, this got me thinking. It's a little bit similar, not completely similar, but a little bit similar to what we're going through at the moment with people not being able to see their families. That was similar during the war. People weren't allowed to go and see their families. And that VE day, VE day was a big celebration where everybody got back together, to, together again. And I thought that's something that might happen again soon when we get to see all our friends and families like friends from school and our teachers again, which would be really nice. So I thought it'd be a great idea to make some bunting. Now bunting is what they use to decorate the streets in London. I've got some bunting in some of the pictures, I where I put them? In some of the pictures I had here. Here we go, in this one you can see some bunting going across the top. And in this bunting, they used the Union Jack. So I thought we could make some of our own bunting today. So what you'll need to make some bunting, if you'd like to decorate on VE day tomorrow, is you'll need some old material. So I've got some old t-shirts. Okay, now please make sure if you're gonna be cutting up any t-shirts, you check with your mums or dads, whoever looks after you. Please do not just go chopping up any, any t-shirts. Please check to make sure you're allowed to use them. So I've got quite a few old t-shirts. You're gonna need some cardboard, and you're going to need some scissors and you're going to need a pen. So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what shape you want to make 
your bunting. Now I'm going to make my bunting into a kind of triangle shape. I've made one already. So I'm going to make my bunting into a triangle shape. Now what you want to do is you want to get your ruler, okay, and we're going to measure out the shape of our triangle. Now I understand I might be going through this a little bit quickly, but this is quite similar to Miss Ellis's activity last week. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it, and I've got some I made earlier, a bit Blue Peter, and then you can come back and watch this video when you want to make your own. Or if I go a little bit too, too quickly, you can come back and watch this video. It'll be on the YouTube and on our Facebook, so you can come back and watch how to do it. So I'm going to measure about 20 centimetres along for the top of my bunting. I'm going to get my pen, and I'm going to measure around 20 centimetres across the top. I'll do it this side actually because it's a bit mucky this bit of cardboard. You should see I've got quite a thick line there and I'm going to find the halfway point along this line which will be 10 centimetres. So I'm going to measure the halfway point on that line which will be 10 centimetres and make a mark. So I've made a mark halfway across that line and I'm just going to draw down using my ruler in a nice straight line. So what you should have at the moment is a nice T-shape, okay? You should have a nice T-shape on your cardboard and I'm going to join the two ends from my top line to the bottom of my T. I have my bunting shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop, cut out my bunting triangle. Unfortunately, I can't see a lot of the comments that are coming up, so that's the reason I'm not doing many shout outs at the moment. But if you please post your name in the class you're in, then I'll be able to say hello to you. I can't see a lot at the moment, so just keep them coming in and I'll be able to say hello to everybody who's watching. Now, hello, Oscar in Owls. So, like I said, I'm just cutting out my shape to give me the perfect triangle for my bunting. Don't need this cardboard anymore. So I'm getting my triangle shape for my bunting and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw around this onto a piece of my old material. So I'm going to lay my old material out on the table, a nice flat bit. Now this one's got some design on it so I'm going to avoid that bit. There's a nice white section here that I haven't used yet. Hello, Connie and Robbins is watching as well, and, and Ruben in Rabbits, nice to see you're watching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my triangle onto my material. Now, if you are using paper at this point, it works exactly the same. I'm just using old material because it will last a little bit longer, okay? And I'm gonna push down really hard on my um, bunting triangle so it stays nice and tight to the material. Now, this bit's tricky. I am using a black pen, but you could use like a Biro or any pen that you have. And I'm just going to draw around my triangle really gently. So hopefully when you lift it up and you look at your material, you should see a triangle. Okay? You should see your triangle. And now this is the really tricky bit. You wanna make sure you have some nice sharp scissors. Like I said, make sure you're doing this with your mums or dads, okay? And we are gonna cut around this triangle to give us our shape. Now it can be quite hard on the material because it's not always that tight. So I'm gonna cut around really carefully. I can see lots more people saying hello. I can see that Daniel in my class in Owls is watching. So hello, Daniel and his little brother. I can see that my neighbours are watching. So hello, Maddie and B. Nice to see you're, you're tuning in. Not actually Pashti children, but they're Pashti children for the day. So I'm really carefully cutting around my triangle. It's hard to, 
to cut and talk at the same time, making sure that you kind of go on the inside of the black line. You see on that top one, I've tried to go inside the black line so I don't have a black line on my um, bunting. So I don't have a black line on my bunting. Cutting around really carefully. This works the same as if you're doing it on material or on paper. Make sure that you're just cutting on the inside of that black line, just so you don't get any black on your, your final bunting pieces. Really carefully. Lots of people saying they're missing their friends and their teachers. So I'll tell you that we're all missing you as well, like Oscar in my class, I can see that Lily, I think that's in, in Robbins. We all look forward to seeing you soon. So thank you for your kind words. So here we go, I've cut around my triangle. Now, the nicer the material, the easier it will be, okay? I haven't got, mine's just an old t-shirt, so it's a little bit flimsy, but it'll do. So here we go, I've got my triangle, I'm now ready to decorate it. Now it's completely up to you how you decorate your bunting. Now you might want to take inspiration from the pictures I've showed you of VE Day 75 years ago and decorate your bunting with some Union Jacks. Or, I thought a nice idea, would be to decorate your bunting with the people that you are currently missing. So, if you do want to put your bunting up when you see your friends or your family for the first time, if you have a little get together, then you might want to draw some of your friends or family on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to draw one of my brothers on my bunting because I haven't seen him for a long time. And I'm looking forward to seeing him um, when we all get to see each other again because he doesn't live with me. So I'm going to draw a picture of my brother on my bunting. Now it's really important when you do this, if you're using Sharpies like I am, which most probably aren't the best felt tips in the world, you might want to lean on something so you don't ruin the table and get in trouble. So, I've got lots of felt tips here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing on the table. And I'm just going to draw a really basic picture of my brother. Now, when you're drawing on material, it's really important that you pull it nice and tight so that it's nice and stretched out, because otherwise it might go a little bit crinkled so I'm just going to start off with a little bit of hair. I know it's quite hard for you to see what I'm doing but and this gives you a bit of an opportunity to finish cutting your one out or or join in with colouring in at the same time. Now the owls will know that drawing is not one of my fortes so I am going to give it my best shot. And I'm going to draw his face. That's what I've got so far. So I've got his hair and I've got the shape of his face. And now I'm going to draw his glasses on because he wears glasses. Some black ones, I think. He's got square glasses. Oh, I've made one eye a little bit bigger than the other. There we go. Just change that. And he's got some blue eyes. So I'm going to do a little bit of blue for the eyes. And then I'm going to give him a big smile. So I've got that so far. I've done his, his head. And now I'm just going to do a little bit for his body. But I'm not going to colour it in because I know that you want to find out how you get onto the next stage. I'm just going to do the outline of his body. There we go. So that is, is almost finished, okay? It's almost finished and that is ready to be attached to my bunting. Now, to make your bunting, you're going to need some string, okay? And the best way I've found to do it is if you use a glue stick. Now, make sure you've got an, enough string on the, on the end. And with your bunting material, I'm just gonna turn it so it's the wrong way around. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue along the top section. 
Not very much at all, you just need the tiniest amount. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue along the top. And the glue sticks works absolutely fine. If you have other glue, because you don't have a glue stick, that's fine. You can use PVA glue or anything like that. Whilst I'm doing this, I can say hello to a few more people. So hello to Henry, who is watching, and he is in Squirrels, and Albert is watching in Robins as well. So I'm putting a little bit of glue just along the top. Now, I have found that the better the material you use, a little bit easier this can be. Or if you're using paper, it is a lot easier because the material does start to fold over when you add the glue. But you don't need much, just a little bit on each bit. Then, laying my material flat on the table, I'm gonna get my string, and I'm just gonna lay that over the top of where, get all these bits out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Lay that over the top of where I've just put my glue and push down, and I'm gonna fold my material back on itself. So you cover the string with the material. So I'm covering the string with the material. It can be a little bit sticky, a little bit fiddly. So you have to make sure you're showing real perseverance with this one. Make sure you're being that perseverance penguin. Sticking it down and then hopefully, here you go, you can see my bunting has been attached to my string. Now, I've had a few practices of this this morning and over the last couple of days. So I've actually already finished my bunting. This was just the last piece I needed to add, so I thought we could add that together. Hello to Luca L, who's in my class as well, so hello to you. So I've got my bunting on here. Now what I've done is I've used a different coloured material just to separate my pictures, because otherwise it could be a lot of drawing. So I've got a picture of my brother on that one. I've got some other coloured picture, um, other coloured material, picture of my sister, some other uh, kind of material again, my other brother, and this is when I've gone a bit more traditional with my bunting. I've got the Union Jack, okay, I've drawn that one, and also I've gone for an NHS rainbow piece of bunting as well, just to kind of mark the occasion we're in, because I'm definitely gonna put this up when I get to see my family again for the first time. So hopefully you can see that I have got a nice, row of, of bunting all ready to hang up and go. Now I did find gluing it was the best way, okay? So I'm gonna take a picture of my bunting and put it on the Facebook page. And your 11 a.m. challenge today is to try and make your own bunting that you can hang up tomorrow, or some bunting that you can hang up when you see your friends and family for the first time, okay? So that's your challenge. Can you make your, old bun your own bunting? So like I said, you can make it out of old material and just use some felt tips to colour it in. Or if you haven't got any old material in your house, any old t-shirts, you can just use some paper and it works the exact same. It just might not last as long, okay? So that is your challenge. I'm going to put something on the Facebook page to remind you of your challenge. And then all you need to do is put your photos and comments underneath. And then after my lunch, I'm going to have a look, sit down on Facebook and have a look through all of your all of your bunting that you've been able to make today, which I'm really looking forward to do. So, thank you all for joining me this morning. I hope you may have learned a little bit about why we celebrate VE Day, and you've learned how to make some bunting as well. And I look forward to seeing all of your bunting in the comments on the Facebook page. Thank you everyone for joining me, and I hope you're all well, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a lovely afternoon.